morning everyone and happy Tuesday. This week I am here to talk about the immune system because probably about two months ago I went to a really interesting uh, lecture from a naturopath on the immune system and I realized that unless you take high school biology you don't really get to learn about how the immune system works so I thought that would be an interesting topic for you guys to learn a, a little bit more about and how the immune system is formed initially and all of that stuff. So to clarify, morning Monica, the immune system is essentially a network of cells, tissues and organs that work together to protect the body. And there are two, basically you can break the immune system down into two parts. The first is the innate immune system, which means it's not specific. It will attack anything that comes into the body. But the purpose of this part of the immune system is to prevent entrance into the body. So this means the skin is your primary defense because anything that gets past the skin will get into your body. Mucus also counts because it co collects things that go in your nose and your ears and things like that. The pH in the stomach, the high acidic stomach acid also counts because if you eat something that's contaminated, most times the acidity in the stomach will destroy it and then you won't notice that anything's wrong. This also includes phagocytes, also called neutrophils, which are essentially the way I was taught it is that they're the little Pac-Man. I don't know if you've ever played that game, but it's a little yellow circle with a mouth and he goes around and he eats things and essentially the little phagocytes or Pac-Man cells move through the body and eat anything that's not healthy. So if you have sick cells, it's going to come through and eat those. The innate immune system also has macrophages, which work in a similar fashion. There are two more components of the innate immune system. One are called natural killer cells, and these are kind of like security system. So if they realize something has infected the body, they search and destroy those specific cells. It's usually one at a time. They're a little slower to work, but they work quite well. In terms of dendritic cells, I have my notes from the presentation. And it says it's found in places that come in contact with the outside environment. So typically any orifices are usually where these come, they essentially, the dendritic cells ingest the pathogen and carry that part of the pathogen to other immune cells to kind of take part of the information from that cell and pass it around the immune system so suddenly everybody knows what to look for. So they're kind of like the analyst in the back that says, okay, this is what we're looking for and sends it out to everybody. And that's all the innate immune system. The secondary part is what most people consider when they think of the immune system. This is the adaptive immune system. So the more bacteria and viruses that we are, we interact with when we're younger, the stronger our immune system is. So this is the one that becomes learned. You can teach it, which is essentially one of the tenets of homeopathy is that if you're exposed to something, you you present an equal but natural version of it that is stronger and will kill it. And then your body knows what that looks like. And the next time it comes back, your body can fight it off faster. The adaptive immune system is made of T and B cells. The T cells are generated in the thymus gland T for thymus, and these are essentially the receptors. So they go around and attach little receptors to the, to the bad cells. I'm trying to explain it very basic. Um, the B lymphocytes tag the sick cells. So any cells that are bad, they kind of try to think of an analogy on the fly. Um, kind of run by and tag it with a little um, 
receptor. And then when the immune system picks up on that receptor, the T lymphocytes can come in and attach to that receptor and kill it. These are the memory cells. So as soon as they have recognized something that they've seen before, this is when those cells get destroyed. So something like if you get the same strain of the common flu, your body is, and your body is strong, it's faster for it to respond because it has seen that pathogen before. Sometimes it is more delayed in the innate immune system, especially if you haven't, your body hasn't seen that pathogen before, but because they kind of have to mobilize the troops to go and attack. Signs that you have a poor immune system, and this includes your pets as well. Fatigue, a cold, allergies, poor wound healing is probably a really obvious sign. You get a cut or a scrape and it's taking a really long time to heal. Poor digestion is another big one. Chronic inflammation, which is most chronic diseases. Poor coat quality, because if your immune system is functioning poorly, that will present in the skin and the coat because that is one of your primary immune defenses. So if your system is weakened, more things can get in through the skin and the coat, which you really don't want. And joint pain. Common stressors that can weaken the immune system included but not limited to poor nutrition, stress, lack of sleep, or exercise. If you're taking any immunosuppressive drugs and poor hygiene. But when you think about it, approximately 80% of the immune system is present in the gut. So if you're eating poorly and your gut mi microbiome is not healthy, then almost anything can make you sick. Because if your body can't process what you're taking in and actually get nutrients from that food, then you're not able to feed your system and get stronger, which means you'll be sicker for longer. So I just want to talk about that. Um, the Holistic Pet Health Conference that I watched also had a talk about the immune system, and she talked about how the immune system was created. And I'm just looking at it. It was a vet from, I believe, the United States. And she talked about the creation of the two parts of the immune system. In genetics, it's called Th1 and Th2. Th1 is supposed to be the bigger percentage because this is when your body has a non-inflammatory response. So it's a little more natural response. It's supposed to be the bigger percentage in some cases um, in really sick animals. This is not the case, but this covers everything from bacteria, viruses, yeast, fungus, parasites, etc the the that's the cellular immune system the humoral immune system th2 is all inflammatory what they've done is studied in puppies the levels of the immune system present and the strength of it in puppies given vaccines and puppies not given vaccines which i find really interesting but essentially what they found is that the humoral immune system, Th2, the bad one, is higher in those given vaccines. Meaning that anytime anything is presented to the body, whether it be an allergen or a new substance they've never smelled or tasted before, the body is more likely to have an inflammatory response. Meaning presenting with skin conditions or dermatitis, presenting with alopecia, presenting with allergies, or sneezing, or um, a digestive sensitivity to whatever the thing is. I'm just presenting your research. That is what um, the research showed about puppies given vaccines. So I thought you should know. Um, they also, I did, um, one of my supplements of the month a while ago was colostrum, which is essentially the mother's milk and a lot of the healthy bacteria that are in that mother's milk. And what they found was in puppies, 
they get 90% of the antibodies present in their system through the mother's milk. They are born with a leaky gut the first three days that they're born in order to absorb the large molecules from that colostrum, meaning that after those three days, it seals up and it's harder for them to receive proper uh, antibodies. So within the first three days is really, really key for them to get all those healthy nutrients. But I just thought that was really interesting. But the immune system is mostly created by the mother's milk. So if they're not healthy in the beginning, that's setting them up for a poor health wise life, which unfortunately we know is true in most people as well. If you don't take care of your body, you won't feel good for very long and it's easy to get sick. But if we build up our system with good things, then we will be healthy for a long time. That's all I have to say about the immune system. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Monica, I can see you going in and out. Um, have a fabulous rest of your week, and I will see you next Tuesday.